Hi, welcome to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Robert Winters. Judy Nathans. And today's January 28th. Oh, it is. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. January 28th. That's right. We still got that 2020 vision. We thing do. Going. We do. We do. We do. Okay. Right. So there was a meeting last night. There's yeah. impeachment hearings. There's oh, this. We got that. everything going on so from national the, down yeah. to local. Well, though they, on. yeah, they, they abbreviated theirs, but I guess they're now back and forth stuff starting. Right. On week, the, which on I think the, will be interesting. On the national level, I think what they did to get, and again, mind you, I have not been watching it, but the thing is you go through the living room, it's yeah. on the TV. Well, it, it's on it. the radio. It's been on GBH and BUR. I saw a woman constantly. actually when I was walking over today. Yeah. I saw a t classic Cambridge scene. Oh, me too. There she is. She's, she's, she's on her bicycle. Yeah. With like the, the little seats on there with her kids going. Yeah. And a radio on the bike. Oh, so it wasn't in her ear. Playing the news reports oh, about that's the impeachment. Funny. I thought, ah. how Cambridge is that? At least it wasn't in her ear. <laughs> that's dedicated. I like it that. It is dedicated. Yeah. I'm, not say, I'm not being critical. Yeah. I'm just saying, how Cambridge is that? Right? That Yeah, I, I yeah. must have, I was listening to it on my phones till I could get to the gym where yeah. I could listen to it. So, so let's so, see. Yeah. So what is it? The, 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 the Republicans finished today in, in the, right. use less so of their said, 24 hours because so they, they had nothing to say, right. really. So they got to say basically now, next comes questions. I don't actually know what that means. No, it means that each side gets to ask questions of the presenters. Oh, oh, okay. So that ends back and forth, and that's happening, I guess, Thursday. I don't know. Check your schedule, but that yeah. to me should be more interesting. Well, they are reconvening tomorrow. I think that's what I is heard them say at the very end. Oh, so maybe that yeah. is part of it. All yeah. right. And then, uh, you know, and I, I don't know, how long does that go on? Days? I don't know. Well, there's no witnesses that, that been, unless this is, oh, maybe this is the discussion. This is when they're going to find out if those Republicans, including Romney and Collins, Whether they get the additional four Republicans. Going, yeah. Right. They need four Republicans to sit, to not, to, to disagree I with heard, the majority, which yeah. means that it might, they may need to. And I overheard that the, the McConnell crowd was like, they were playing hardball oh. to get everybody to stay in line. Yeah. So, right, um, but so, what do they have to lose? Um, we I know, know who has to lose. You know, the Doug Jones, who was the Democrat, who got that seat, the Roy Moore seat. Yeah, he's leaning towards not. You know, I because have, he is in a Trump district. Yeah, everybody's yeah. a lot of the Republicans are scared. You know, as if to say oh. they're going to get primaried out of existence. But right. I have always, for the longest time, maybe I'm just hopelessly naive, but I've always felt that for a person to just stand up on their own two feet and act, you know properly, thoughtfully, and whatever, um, that they would be rewarded, you know, be somewhat independent and you would well, get rewarded. But maybe I'm totally I, naive. I, yeah. I, I was born like yesterday. My <laughs> birthday was January 27th, so 2020. Ask, what? Is it your birthday? No, no, no. No, I was born yesterday. Yeah, oh, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Don't do that. I'm too <laughs> right. concrete right now. Um, right. Stupid question, ignorant of me, is every Senate seat up? This election? No, one third of Does all Senate overlap? seats. Yes. Oh, okay. The thing is, the way it works because they have a hundred seats, so you can't divide it evenly into. Is it just know. a Senate? But the representatives so are about, always up every two uh, years. Yes, every two years. Oh, so okay. everybody. Up. So that you know, they, oh, okay. you tend to see a lot more wild and crazy sure. rhetoric from when the representatives. The reps, okay. Yeah. So, so it's only a third. Only a third, and it's not that it's evenly divided. So the thing is, no. it's, it's not like. Yeah. And on one year, it might be of the. Hmm. One third of the let's say thirty three seats that are up, there might be more Republicans than Democrats that are well, up. Well, aren't there were some special elections to fill seats, so those right. may come up. Yeah, um, right. But you know, it's not like a, you necessarily get a proportional amount of Democrats and Republicans in any given election. And I don't know what the cut is going to be for this one here. Hmm. But you know, people, it's going to get a lot of attention. Well, mm. Markey's being challenged by. Patrick Kennedy. I went to the thing the other night at the I library. Heard. I have my spies. Go? I wasn't yeah. there. Because you, but you're, I know you're you big were on there. the Cambridge. Oh, <laughs> oh, did you? I know because you spoke to the election commissioner, right? Victoria Harris. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. All right. My eyes and ears. Yes. 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 It's true. So, and, by, and by the way, speaking of elections, oh. I just want to mention oh, that the registration. Um, the, yeah, the, no, no, no. The, oh, the, the, that's right. The, the voter registration mm -hmm. for the presidential primary, which, which is, is March, March 3rd, 3rd. Mm -hmm. is coming up. And I think it's, what is the de the deadline for that? It's like there. 20 days prior. But, um, so I don't remember exactly the date of that. Just But look, if you're watching this program, you're there, registered, okay? And if not, just do it tomorrow, okay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or I'll find you. <laughs> I'll, I think it's, it's, is it 20 days before? It's or something like that. Yeah, I think it's about 20, 20 days. Um, but, um, but the thing is, is that they're mm -hmm. also having, because uh, I was a little unsure last week, yeah. they are having early I voting for, um, for the presidential primary. I know that because there was a request for more money to cover. That's right. So it's February <laughs> 24th through 28th. 
five sites plus mm -hmm. the Cambridge Election Commission, which is always available for early right. voting. Right. So, um, so those sites are um, City Hall Basement, uh, Police Department Community Room over on 6th Street in East Cambridge, the Main Library, the Cambridge Water Department Building up on Freshmont Parkway, yeah. and the O'Neill Library on Ringe Avenue. Which but are, not every day. I mean, yes, every day, but the be, hours are different for so different it'll places. So February yeah. 24th through 28th, Monday through Friday, no weekenders this time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's different hours. Oh, oh actually, Mon the hours are the same, but diff I mean, like Monday it's yeah. 12 to 8. Tuesday and Thursday are 9.30 to 6. And actually Friday also 9.30 to 6. Yeah. Uh, the election commission offices are a little wider. So, um, but you can, you, this actually, you can go check them no, out. It's only till 6 the election. Oh, wait, when's till 8? Maybe. Yeah. Whatever, you can yeah. check it out. So anyway, um, so I urge everyone to do early voting so that or they will be... Or to get registered if you're no, not. For, uh, there's one really important reason why you should do early voting, which is that if you if enough people do early voting, mm -hmm. when I go to vote on election day, there will be no lines at all. Oh, and that and it is a presidential and I, and I have seen lines yeah. of people well, waiting Well, people saw voting. lines in our uh, municipal because of the machine slowness in the or something. Yeah, Maybe, is yeah. that because it was also ranked choice? Um, yeah, and it was, it was just it was something about a 15-second lag or something. Yeah. They actually are addressing that. To see, there well, are we'll some find out on higher, March 3rd, won't we? Higher speed uh, yeah, scanners. Okay. But, but I have to mention that the reason for the, the extra time is that the scanners are actually doing a better, more accurate job of scanning accurately and making sure they don't miss anything or and mm. you know rejecting ballots if there's a problem. And so we have backup. Should, it's some degree should, you should be thankful that they're actually I know. doing that. Places across the country. I think that should be mandated. You have to have backup to a vote. Yeah, you know, one of the, the curious yeah, things, these um, these voting machines, the scanners that we currently have, actually um, can have the capacity to scan and produce actual images of the ballots and record them. But Massachusetts state law doesn't permit that, so oh, that they don't feature has image. to be turned off. Interesting. Yeah. yeah privacy. So. Um, I, you know, I think it's not really a privacy thing, hmm. but I, I think, but it, it's just the way it's done, and um, that would take up a lot more data. I mean. Uh, the and thing is, is that unlike the old machines with their 128 glorious kilobytes of, of oh, uh, storage, is, these are it, gigs and gigs uh, and gigs, uh -huh. and I don't think uh, storage capacity is an difference. issue. Honestly, the thing is, how many, how you got your phone? How many, how yeah. many? Um, I have to keep deleting stuff. I right, have a but very you have slow. multi megabyte photos, and you probably have no. thousands of them on no, your phone. No, I don't on this phone. That's the whole point. I nope. run out of storage. I only have sixteen gigabytes. You should carry around a voting machine. Yeah, I only have sixteen gigabytes. I cannot carry around more than like twenty photos right. or something. It's how my, big are your photos? You know what it is? I have a lot of apps. Oh, okay. All right. My photos aren't very big. Anyway, right. we'll discuss that. Doesn't matter. I don't right. need all that. <laughs> you know, these people like, oh, here it is, here it is, and they're scrolling through thousands of I photos to show you one on their phone. It's wacky. Like, I don't need that. It's wacky. I got no phone. Well, so that is another. Me. I think it's a problem for other people. It is. It is absolutely. <laughs> I can't for get all of you. Now, they can't text you. Now, speaking anyway. of images, sort of a, ah. a sad event, really nationally. Oh, was the tragic yeah. death of Kobe Bryant yeah. and his daughter and and seven other people, I believe it was. They're saying in, nine, so it's like, I think Los there was Angeles. more than one child there. Right. But like children, Including mothers Alta and Valley daughters. Including family, people from Cape Cod awful. League, baseball. And well, he used to do the Brewster um, Waves or something, right. which I actually saw a play this summer. Yeah. That's funny. So, you know, a terrible tragedy, but I have to say one thing that was mm -hmm. kind of like Cambridge stepping up to the plate, uh, and it was actually... I made it to national news, uh, was that uh, one of our dear friends in Central Square commissioned a graffiti artist to actually do Graffiti Alley uh, and do a, 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 an image of Kobe Bryant and his daughter in here. So that's this, this yeah, piece I of the image. Yeah, I can't get the whole thing You won't be able to do out. the whole thing, so maybe you can just... Zoom um, in or zoom out? Uh, maybe just to scroll down and just sort of appreciate All it right. that way here. So you can see the top of, this is the daughter, Gigi. Yeah. Gianna, yeah, and she's sitting like or sta on top of Kobe. Yeah, and those numbers that refer to his basketball numbers, and I believe too was her basketball yeah. number she played on a league. Right, and, and this he, is amazing. How did this happen now? Well, it's Patrick. <laughs> yeah. So the commission to artists who then contacted Michael Monastine with the Central Square mm -hmm. Business Improvement District, and in in a flash they got the same artist who had done the Martin Luther King. 
um, right, uh, which is across one the alley, right? Now, it's right? actually just to the left yeah. of this, mm -hmm. um, and um, and you know, w you know, within hours, that was basically up and done. I tell you, Amazing. you know, it's, a, it's know. an interesting illustration of of yeah. what good creative things that can be yeah. done with a business improvement district. If you yeah. if you had like a city government to do something like this, it wouldn't happen yeah. first, but. Even if it could happen, it was, it was amazing. Um, it would, they'd yeah. have to put it out to bid or do something silly like that in order to do it. So the responsiveness is mm -hmm. of the business. Oh, there's the artist's name down there. I can't read it, though. It looks great. like that's the artist's name. Yeah. 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 You know, so anyway, that job well wonderful. done. Yeah. You know, I've never been the biggest fan of the graffiti alley, but the thing is, is the mm -hmm. MLK image that was put oh, up on MLK that. Day, that uh, K Day. Uh, as well as this one for Kobe Bryant was just wonderful. Mm -hmm. It does for me. It raised sort of a curious question, which is if somebody actually puts out a piece of graffiti art that is really fabulous, um, what is the protocols amongst graffiti artists for painting over it? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean that's kind of an awkward thing if you're right. If you get to well, that, well, I'll get to it. You can keep talking. Yeah, can go back to you know. So anyway, so that was uh, it was a uh, you know Cambridge. Did good there, you know, and speci certain specific individuals um, as well, you know, really was great. So, um, so uh, we did have city council meeting last night, yeah. and um, it was, you know, this is still early on in the term, so it's not like you're, you're getting these, uh, you know, 40 city council order days with uh, 27 committee reports, because just hasn't they had like enough time 10 for or it. 11, right there. Well, there were three committee reports, two, oh, the, of, yeah. two of which are leftovers from the previous uh, council. There are actually, I think, still 15 committee reports due from the previous council. I was going to say, these were... Uh... Wait, did, uh, okay. And one, from, and one from the current No, no, one. but these two committee reports are based on meetings that happened this year. Um, I think the, one... Well, or, one or, was December 11th, but one right. I thought the, the second tree one was uh, recently, no? The tree one certainly was. And but that was were, already January was, 22nd. Was, what Those happened to do with the Cambridge done. Carnival, which was the second that, committee report. Right. And also the, before, yeah. the original one on natural, natural gas ban right. was actually dated to December 11th. December. So right, because Jan Devereaux's number. Right, so those, are the, number, right, so those are the two from okay. the previous council. And okay. then and then they do, you know, I have to get, give a credit to the, the new city clerk. They, I, I'm going to say he he's had doing the tremendous January 22nd, which is yeah. just a week ago, and he already had the committee report on that one. Yeah, yeah. Now they're using, some, it's, it, it's a little weird because they're using oh, some software to generate, right. it's essentially a big transcript. It's, you know, I read through, the, I actually read through these. They are I, chock full of errors, but. I read uh, through, is that why? Because I yeah. actually said, wow, this is even more, I remember minutes from past, it didn't have everything. This has actual, it's pretty much except everything. that it's auto-corrected or something, right? Um, I it, think it, I think that's what it is. I think it's generated, and then the, at least according to one of the city councilors, city council aides will go through it. But well, there's a lot they, missed. There's, yeah. a, there's yeah. a lot missed. So but the I, gist is there. When I put it up on my site, yeah. and I see obvious errors, yeah. I correct them, so there's yeah. a, there's another level You'd of correction to, on yeah. mine. That's interesting. You know? Um, but I still appreciate the fact that wow, they said this and it was like verbatim almost. You know, the, the, I like does, that. I will note though that Patty Nolan at one point actually felt the need to summarize the meeting as part of her uh, the, the discussion last night for one of the. I think it was was it the tree ordinance one. Yeah. Um, because honestly, a transcript is wonderful, but it, you, sometimes you just want the synopsis, right? And that's not provided now. And what do you mean a synopsis? How do you get a synopsis? That's up to the clerk? It's always been done that way. So in other words... What would be a synopsis? What do you mean? It's like It's really an more like minutes of the meeting as this, opposed to This was labeled minutes. I know, but it's really more like a transcript. Well, then yeah. they should say transcript. But they I really appreciate should. it because really minutes should. to me... I've been at meetings where I've seen minutes and they don't have everything listen, in there. Listen, at times when yeah. I've actually spoken at committee yeah. meetings or at city council meetings and, and, I, and I thought I made a very yeah. clear... I and hope to think and that it was a clearly minutes, laid out right? point and then it says... You know, Robert Winters 366 Broadway spoke against the petition or something. It, and it's right. all it said, you know. And so I said, wait a minute, I, I made a really good point. So this is better, better. But, better, but one should yeah. go through it and correct spelling yeah, or... Yeah, but a, a I little, don't think it was misinformation. I just no, no, think it's it not was misinformation. misunderstood or mis, mis... Yeah, but the thing is, yeah. if people go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know... And sometimes you just want to say, okay, they spoke for 10 minutes about blah, blah, blah. Oh, so you're, you're yeah. saying it should be somewhat limited. You know, a little summary Edited. would be helpful, oh, like an executive okay. summary. I, well, I guess we have Even different opinions. I like seeing it because I could not be there. I want to hear every word. 
So I guess no, no. I'm not saying stop doing it. I'm just saying is that maybe maybe up at, up front and sort of say here's the synopsis. Now here's the whole. Speaking transfer. of which, yeah. and I think that almost uh, leads into one of the policy orders about interpret interpreters. Now, what do you feel about that? Um, now, how would that apply to that, for instance? You know, over the years, yeah. there have been Maybe lots we should of back up and explain what the order was. Uh, all right. Well, this one has to do with, I think, kind of, is it real-time interpretation for different languages? Well, did it say real-time, or did, was it everything? I think you might be right on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. But, you know, I remember over the years, there were, first off, there were calls for... Um, like a... a um, having a... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, sign, sign language or uh, yeah, mean, various um, mm -hmm. helpers for you know people with um, you know visually impaired, right. hearing impaired. Well, you don't have um, it here. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, anyway, lots of requests that have come down right. over, over time. Yeah, um, uh, and you know, so this is sort of the the next round of it all. I mean, honestly, the thing is, tech, from a technological point of view just in terms of making information available at these public meetings, we're leagues ahead of where we were five years ago. Um, but the thing is, we're not 100% What there. do you mean leagues ahead? in terms of language fit? Or um, just in terms of... of, of this, getting information. The, getting information. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's right. not perfect. And we're televising yeah. everything now, too, which is great. That's right. That's right. But what I didn't understand about that was, because if it's real time and they said, yes, there's tech, you know, you couldn't, this came up a while ago, McGovern pointed that out and they couldn't do it technologically, but now they might be able to. But what does that mean? Someone that we hire sits in like at the UN and actually reinterprets it as it happens? That you would know, be totally wouldn't... expensive. And who is it going to? You know, here's my guess. I think it's after the fact I'll, you would hear. I'll betcha. Yeah. Because... If you think about it, there's yeah. like Dragon is one of the companies that had speech recognition oh, software. Right. Uh, and certainly the software, the, whatever they're using now to generate the, the uh, minutes of these meetings, or so really the transcripts. Down language. Um, the thing is, is that if that can generate a th text, mm -hmm. then with a tiny little time lag, just as you have Google can do translate uh, text. Uh, you, the, there are software that can actually right. do trans. Can you imagine be, if there's mistakes bad. with the English? Oh, it looks like Oh, my full God. Mistakes. You know what? I mean, I have the it, sense that it was more like someone that really wants to know what's going on, but they don't have the language. I think, well, wait a minute. You know, speed and accuracy are not always compatible. How many people uh, is that? Compatible. I, think, I think they should do a survey of somehow to see who is this really going to reach, because to me that sounds very expensive. Um, I don't Even know. Even though it, there might be software, but how, how many languages are you going to do? You have to make a decision on that, yeah. Um, and it's, it can't be real time, I don't think. It'll be close to it. It could be close to it. Yeah, but well, then that's more do, than a machine. You're going to have to have someone monitor that. As I say, if you can do speech recognition software that can actually generate the text more or less real time, you know, maybe but with then they're saying, okay, then you could just do it at home on your computer, but that means assuming everyone has a computer and everyone has internet. I There's know. a lot of things here. I wonder sometimes actually but what the demand is really, you know, that, or, is, or know. whether this is just sort of signaling the virtue of the counselor. I have to say, if to you say, need the translation of everything, um, because you, I, well, first of all, I think it was unfair to say most departments don't do. I know the recycling division sends out stuff in different languages. I yeah, know that yeah. for sure. I don't know about other departments, but there it's important because it's your waste, it's your sure. trash. Um, I, I mean, I, yeah, I'd like to see a report. On like what is out there, and but is it feasible? To me, it's a man, it's a woman manpower issue too. You can't just have a machine do this, right? So, you know, and I would hope that if it does generate sort of text and it's full of errors, that there will be a a, a correction after the fact. Yeah, because if well. you're talking about yeah. errors now, I cannot even imagine this yeah. translating oh, yeah. into Chinese or, or you know, something really, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, now, I'd now, like to see the demand, if the demand is really there. Yeah. And I don't I, know how you determine that. I doubt that. it, yeah. Um, anyway, there were a few other interesting yes. items. Um, well, actually, especially on the, uh, the, the, the city manager's agenda that drew some interest, yes? No? Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe not, um, okay. Yeah. Actually, one thing I would just sort of say, because you know, one, one significant passing in Cambridge oh. uh, was Richard Griffin. Now, I, yeah. I have to say, because I originally met him, I think when we were both on the... Board of the Cambridge Civic Association, and like Carol Surf, who passed away recently. Yeah, that was mentioned um, by Denise. He the, was on that. The yeah. thing is, is I actually remember both of them from mm. those days as real decent 
mm. nice people. You know, I had actually gone onto the board of the CC8 with this. You know, people said to me, "Oh, these people are all just conniving, manu- really? manipulative, really? you know, back backroom dealers and whatever." And yeah, there were a few of those, and some of them are still pl- still in the game today, and they're just as manipulative today as they were mm. then. But the thing is, there were also some really, really decent people as well. And Carol Surf and Richard Griffin were definitely amongst them. So, so anyway, so he passed away quite recently. And, you know, it was interesting to hear in some tributes. Actually, Amy Salzman from the Cambridge Chronicle really, yeah, she had a moment, it, really kind of an emotional impact to his passing, which I thought was really... Was that said, in last week's? Said something or was really that good about Amy Salzman. Last week's uh, Chronicle? Yes, yeah, yes, okay. editorial. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dennis Carlone actually said something at the meeting mm-hmm. last night. I said, well, that was like a revelation to me. He said, yeah. I didn't know that Richard, when he was a young man, mm-hmm. he was a pretty good baseball player. Oh, right, you mentioned I that, said, yeah. I said, Really? Gosh, I yeah. never, you know, I wish I'd known that. that would be yeah. Great, yeah. Yeah. You know, but you know, for over the years, we had occasional contact, and he was always just really. I just decent read his time. articles. I think his his was, column, yeah, the growing older aging, column, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in that's the Times Chronicle, him, was that's it. beautifully yeah. written. I mean, yeah. really, really spotless. Wonderful, wonderful person. So, um, so that was one of the council revolution, uh, revolution, <laughs> resolution, <laughs> revolution. That's a whole other matter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one, speaking of revolution. Revolution, potentially revolutionary. Oh. One of the city council orders that I thought was interesting, um, I don't know if it's feasible, but we'll see. Oh. You know, people have been talking, not just, yeah, people not just in Cambridge, but elsewhere too, yes. about why don't we, if just you can everything free. Just free make fares. all the buses free, yeah. free, right? After all, they said, with the t- if you add up the total revenue you get from the buses Doesn't and you, and you tra- do the trade off against just the cost of actually collecting it, you know, honestly, with the bus passes and the time. Oh, I don't know. It's, just a, it's just a thing now. I right, it you is. You need more people, I like know. you said. And were you the one that said then you'd have to hire more buses and more well, people? Well, but, you know, it is potentially very transformative. The thing is, is that, and and, and I'm speaking kind of honestly now because you know, one of the benefits I have in my current yeah, job is that one. I get a free yeah. pass. Yeah. And I kind of like it. It's it, it gives me great encouragement to use the bus, Right. Uh, but for me, it basically took me off the bike and onto the bus rather than out of a car and onto a bus. But it just made it easy. But it's not like you really... Made it easier. You had the money. It just it was a hassle to get You know, the, the thing is, is it's, it's, you yeah. know, some people, I think, think that the only thing this would be, it would be an incentive for people who have a very low income. But the truth is, well, is that, you know, just the fact that you could just get it on and off a bus is yeah. a, as a convenience. But it'd be curious, yeah. I mean, they you could know, do pilot of it, but still. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, are, like myself, are kind of on the thrifty side anyway, so... You know, if you say, oh, it's free, oh, great, I think I'll use it. But now, anyway, right? but getting back to this order, I don't see how it's feasible when it's the MBTA. I don't think it is. It's beyond our city. I don't think it is. So I think yeah. the only way anything like this really happens if is, is if it's done kind of more broadly. You know, yeah, either broadly system. or we have our own bus. Now, the, the, the order <laughs> specifically yeah. talks about Cambridge-specific routes, like the 68, yeah. which is the one I use, was totally within Cambridge. What about 69 the bus. The one that there goes are up there Broadway. are some that others. The 68? The 68, yeah, 69. It runs Leachman to Harvard Square. Mm. You know, so you, so those. I suppose if you could get a concession from the MBTA, you could you could maybe get those to run free. Mm. Um, you know, they're they're not always heavily utilized. You know, so there is actually extra capacity in the and a lot of the hours of the day mm. for these buses. But the truth is, is that if you really made something like this free, then it becomes a lot more attractive. You'd probably get. More riders. What if it was just free at certain hours? Would um, that help, like rush hour, and then you pay the rest of the time? Uh, maybe. It just as a, but Then everybody know. will wait a rush hour to get on the bus. No, no, no. If you have to go to work, you've got to go to work. <laughs> you got to go to work, right, um, yeah. Um, I have, it's something that, like you said, is being talked about in other You know, cities normally I, I'm, I'm more inclined to go for something like a, a token fee, uh, fee just to sort of, you know, as a sort of an act of good faith, like I'm not just trying to take something here right mm-hmm. but uh you know it, i don't think this is a crazy idea no you know, it's been I, talked about actually a lot of places yeah um that's a way to yeah. cut down on right. cars and, and actually up at city hall last night james williamson was there and he's saying mm. do you remember when we had the free bus no. you know there was actually sort really? of there were people who actually would do that they would put together get a bus and they would just operate it on the regular streets of cambridge and just pick up passengers 
Yeah, it was back in the days when there was free love, free clothes, free well, this, remember, free stores, free food. You're the green tortoise that went from coast to coast. I remember <laughs> not only the green tortoise. I know tortoise, someone that got married to someone they met on that bus. There was the gray it rabbit free, too. But it was very cheap, wasn't it? I remember the green tortoise coming oh, after the gray rabbit. We're showing our age. I know, but yeah. I took the gray rabbit. You did? In, Where did that go? I got. I picked it up in New York City and yeah. took it out to San Francisco. Holy moly! And it was actually run by a guy named Lester Rawl, who operated out of Eugene, Oregon. So what I did is I said, I went out to, uh, out to the West Coast, and I said, what the hell? Let's just go up there. And it was like a commune. Next yeah. thing you know, I'm like hanging out in some commune Wait, house. So do they stop? It, it's a nonstop. You went from New York City to San Francisco? Uh, it wasn't nonstop no. exactly, but the thing is, is it was, they took out all the seats. Cheap. And, oh, right. and, That's and right. it was just they, you put your luggage down low, yeah. you put down plywood and then mattresses. God, so I, I traveled across the country on a big mattress. Yeah. And it was fun. It was great, actually. Is this the 70s? Uh, for me, it was about, 70s? I think it was 1974 for me. Yeah, yeah. the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. But I got, you know, I got to know Lester and it was great. Mm. Uh, you know, and I got to know some of the other bus drivers because they were, some of them were living uh, up and in I that company. I guess that just place. went out of. The bus companies hated it and they used oh. every regulation they could. The Greyhounds and Continental that. Trailways okay. of this world to just drive them out. So they were always like looking out carefully, like watch out for the law. We're about to so, get busted. So it was actually it was illegal. It depended on the states, yeah. Oh, because you'd think, have to have you have to have certain permits to to, yeah, act, to operate in the state, was, right? And this right. was rogue buses. This was definitely rogue. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And it was great, but it was interesting. And it was, you know, I forget what I paid to go across oh, the country. It was probably cheap. like it was probably like thirty dollars or Equivalent, something like that. Right. But you know, forty eight hours across the U.S. of A. It was great. You know, and, why uh, did we bring that up? I don't oh, know, free buses, was, <laughs> yeah, free <it> buses, really. <laughs> right? So actually, there was there was a there was a um, a back and forth thing in the Cambridge Chronicle about the gray rabbit that got started some years ago. Oh. And every once in a while, there's still some something gets tagged on. Somebody actually archived it all. Uh -huh. You know, including some of the people who were actually drivers for them who got involved That's in funny. it. It was great. It was so, definitely the hippie great movement. revival. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. should we have free buses for Cambridge? Yeah. Well, I, I think we should have free buses for a lot of. Places. Yeah, and, um, but if it, yeah. the demand would go up, you'll need more buses, more drivers, but it could take a lot of people off the roads otherwise. Yeah. So I think it's, a, I'll be interested well, to see where Well, put more buses on the roads, but at least you... you take a lot more cars those. off. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. So it could be great. We'll see. We'll I think see. it's a good discussion to have. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll be back in a few minutes on Cambridge Inside Oh, out. wow. Really?